Hi guys and welcome back to another LucaVision video. In today's video I'm going to be talking about and discussing the 2019 final in Tel Aviv, Israel and what a show. It was one of the best Eurovision shows we've had in a long long time. Congratulations to the Netherlands, Duncan Lawrence you thoroughly deserved that win. The song was magical, it was an experience, it was a moment and you had the audience eating out of the palms of your hands. It was magical, just magical. Anyway, I'm going to be discussing all of the songs. I'm going to be talking to you about the biggest shocks and surprises that we had. So, let's get cracking. First up, we have Malta. Now, Michaela did fantastically well. The choreography was on point. The staging was so vibrant, colourful. The audience loved it. The song's so modern. The staging was really umphed up a lot. But I was really upset, actually, and really shocked because I thought that they would do so much better in the grand final. Second, we have Albania. Now, Yanida Maliki, wow. So emotive, powerful. The song is so emotional and has a great meaning and message behind it. No one who has performed second has actually won the competition and that fun fact still stands. Then we had the Czech Republic and can I just say, Lake Malawi brought so much energy to that stage. It really oomphed up the feel good factor and it really brought up the vibe. And his vocals were the best I've ever seen from him. Then we have Germany and I loved this performance. I thought Sisters did a really great job, but I can't believe they got nil point from the public vote. Can you believe that? I don't know what they did so bad to get Neil Plot. I thought it was really good. The vocals were on point. The song was emotional. There was a great message. It just, something didn't click with the audience. Then we have Sergei and Russia. Now, I was not a fan of the song, but the stage and change my mind completely. Not surprised to see him climbing and doing so well in the jury vote. Hashtag jury bait. Then we have Lenora in Denmark. And I'm still bitter that Lenora got through at the semi-final and Rocco didn't. It was nothing new, the staging was exactly the same, her vocals were good, and I love the message, don't be too political, don't be too political, don't be too political. Then we had San Marino, and you know what? Sir Hat did so well with the jury vote and with the televote. He, wow, we had a bit of disco fever, I think, didn't we? I mean, I didn't vote for him, but it left me shook to see how popular he was. Well done, Sir Hat, you proved me wrong. And I found out he used to be a dentist. Sir Hat, the dentist. The song shouldn't be say na na na. I think it should be open wide. Say ah ah ah. Say ah ah ah. I'm your dentist coming through. Say ah ah ah. North Macedonia. You guys, you had me shook from beginning to end. It was a moment on stage. I thought, wow, actually, this is really good. She's so talented. The song is amazing. But then when the jury votes came in, did you see that come in? I didn't see that come in. I could not believe how popular she was. She flew up the ranks. She was right on top. Then we had everybody's favourite Swede, John Lundvik. And he brought that soul again. I mean, again, the performance was nothing that we hadn't seen. The vocals are pretty much on par with what we've seen before. I love that the backing singers are really giving it some this time, though. It really oomphed up the energy. And then we had Slovenia. I get, you know I'm not really a big fan of Slovenia. I feel like it zapped everything in the competition. It was a bit of an odd running order, if you ask me, to go from someone like Sweden to then Slovenia on the other end of the spectrum. But that could have worked in its favour. People who are fed up of the Western way of thinking have had their horizons broadened. Then straight after Slovenia, in a bop sandwich, we have Cyprus. And Tamta really took control of that stage. She was sassy, fierce and on fire. I loved how she stomped the music in such a sassy way and costumes on point and her vocals were the best I've ever heard from her. Well done Tamta, amazing. Winner alert! Then we had Duncan Lawrence in the Netherlands and it was such a moment and I think it did him lots of favours coming after such a bop. It was strange seeing how the energy died down but then he had control of the audience and it was so simple yet so effective. Magnificent, I loved it. Moving on to Greece and Katerina in a birdcage let loose. It was great, you could see her really enjoying herself, I think, and her tone of voice is just simply sublime. But I must say, I do not agree with the voting system. Cyprus and Greece giving each other 12 points. Is it because they're neighbours? But the audience in the room at Eurovision definitely gave them booze. They thought it was political and they thought it was because they were neighbours. Then we went to Israel and Kobe singing home. It was emotional and you can see that it really meant a lot to him and it, he loved every moment of it. Then we had Norway, the winners of the televote. Can you believe it? The winners of the televote. But they didn't do so well with the juries. If public had control, Norway would have absolutely smashed that competition. And you know what? I can see why. It is everything Eurovision encapsulates. It's funky, modern, got a great beat to it. 
is ethnic, diverse, cultural. This is what should be played to people to explain what Eurovision is. This is the perfect Eurovision song. It's the definition of Eurovision. Then we moved on to the United Kingdom, proving once again that Eurovision is bigger than us as we came dead last. <laughs> now, I didn't expect anything else. If the UK ever stand a chance of getting anyone on the left-hand side of the table, we really need to up our game. We need to send in something different, unique, out of the box, diverse, and stop playing it safe with love ballads. Songs about this is my moment, I can do this. We know, we're bored of that sort of stuff. And speaking of different, we now move on to Iceland. Oh my God, what on earth was that performance? I mean, they all look like Snapchat filters. I feel like if I put Snapchat on, I could be in the band. It did stand out though. I was watching with my parents and they were watching like, what is this? Then it was Estonia's turn to control the stage and control the stage they did. He was so confident without being cocky and his vocals were the best I've ever heard from him. He really hit those high notes with such justice. But now moving on to a bit more wonky vocals, we had Xena from Belarus with I Like It. I didn't just like it, I loved it. I didn't like the song at first, then I saw the staging and I saw her in the semi-finals and when I heard the song again, it clicked with me and I love it. She may not be the strongest singer, but that big note, oh. It, it didn't go well for her, did it? But it was a bop and people enjoyed it. She got a roar of applause. Then we go on to Azerbaijan. And as I was watching, my mum went, this is my favorite, love this one. And turns out this song was actually played in the UK on BBC Radio 2. It's so contemporary and soulful at the same time. And he smashed that note. Chingiz, you smashed that belt. And I couldn't be prouder of you. I thought you hit it so well. It was pitch perfect, so talented. Good falsettos, shut up about it, shut up about it. And then when that belt came, you knocked it out of the park. Then it was Bilal's turn from France to really show everybody what he was made of. His vocals have got so much better. However, his voice was just so tired. I think he's been promoting the song again and again and again and really trying his best and it just wore his vocals out. But technique, general stage presence, vocals were so much better than anything I've seen from him before. And I loved the staging. It was just showing diversity and it, that, that message is what Eurovision is about. And I thought that was a moment. I was really shocked that they didn't get more votes. I thought they were a strong contender for the top 10. Next, I don't think everyone was ready for this. Who was ready for Italy smashing it? Italy, you should be so proud of Mahmood. He came out with so much power, so much soul, so much passion. He, he sung his heart out and you could tell he was in his zone. He was really going for it. And I'm so glad they ended up second. It was the strongest winner and runner up that we've had at Eurovision for a while. And so different musically as well. And speaking of passion, we move on to Serbia. And Novina really sung her heart out. Those vocals, the only thing I will say is that dress. I feel like the costume designer left it pinned up and they needed to pull the pin out so it could fall down as a ball gown. But I mean, if you've got it, flaunt it. Go for it, girl, get that leg out. It might have helped with the jury votes. And someone who didn't need any help with a televote was Luca Hani with She Got Me. He absolutely just smashed it. Everyone loves a party anthem, a dance beat, something you can proper sink your teeth into. It was awesome. Luca, you proper went for it and you really showed us what you could do. That dance break. I won't copy it because I cannot. Australia, Kate, yes, amazing, loved it. The staging was absolutely epic. The more and more you listen to that song, the more you fall in love with it. She hit every note and she sounded sublime. And then closing the show in a typical fiesta style, Mickey with Lavender. Oh my God, what a great way to close the final. The staging was colourful, vibrant, popping. Everything just screamed at Spanish fiesta and party. The biggest injustice of the Eurovision final was that Mickey did not end up on the left-hand side of the board. What? What? That song was amazing. I, th I kind of think sometimes Spain are taken for granted because they're part of the big vibe. That song was incredible and I cannot believe it did not get more votes. Justice for Mickey. Now something else that I do want to talk about is politics. <laughs> what the hell? Eurovision should be about celebrating diversity and something that connects us all together via music. Why the hell did Iceland hold up a Palestine flag? Given their image and what their song is, Hatred Will Prevail, holding up a Palestine flag was not the best way to go. 
We've already had politics with the Ukraine and them having to pull out. Don't you start with a Palestine flag. Speaking of flags, Madonna, get your act together. What were you doing? It was an honor for you to perform at Eurovision. And then you have to make a political message and put your stamp on it. You couldn't just turn up and sing your song well. You had to make your mark with a Palestine and Israel flag and then the slogan behind, wake up. You're not Mother Teresa, you're a pop star. Don't be too political. I understand that Eurovision is a great platform for people to sing songs about politics and about issues in the world. Look at last year, Madame Monsieur from France and they sung about refugees. North Macedonia this year, singing about being proud of yourself. Don't be too political. As far as interval shows are concerned, this was one of the best ones I have ever seen. It was great, wasn't it? How you had all of the other Eurovision alumni come out to sing each other's songs. Mans, I need that version of Fuego. That was fantastic. And as far as Madonna and Like a Prayer is concerned... Oh, hang on a minute. No wonder Madonna wasn't singing in key. I had it all along. Sorry, my bad. Also in the interval when Madonna just started talking and talking and talking. Euro fans are there like, she doesn't even go here. We want Maroon. Oh look, she's on a staircase with a cape. I wonder if she's gonna fall again. Also, I really wanna talk about this moment that really shocked me, but I could not stop laughing. Can we please just talk about The Mentalist? The Mentalist had a singer from Norway, Tamta, and Luca Hani, and he was doing some sort of magician trick thing that I wasn't really into. But can we just talk about the shade and the looks Tampta gave him when he called her you? Are you ready? That look! It was the sassiest thing I've ever seen and I was living for it. She was ready to say, do you know who I am? I am Tampta. I am singing for Cyprus. And you need my love on replay. Replay, 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 yeah. She was ready to cut someone. <laughs> now let's talk about the final results and the scoreboard. How exciting was that? When they were going down from bottom to top, it would reveal the fan vote. This was such an exciting way of doing it because it kept everyone on their toes and it wasn't guaranteed that if you were called out last, you were gonna receive the biggest votes. And this is where Germany had the nil point moment, which was really awkward. But how cruel. But TV Gold, may I just add, was that moment at the end when they revealed the winning contestant. They had the camera on Duncan and on John for so long. When they revealed that it was Duncan, poor John, his face, he was gutted. Let's just have a little look, shall we? Oh, it's so cringy, isn't it? Let's have another look. But you know what really got me was that he didn't even have a graceful Oscar face. I mean, when you lose, but you want to look like you're supportive for the other person, so you kind of do that fake... I'm not bitter. Like me, when Denmark got through, and Croatia didn't. I'm not saying you shouldn't be sad. He was devastated, but at the same time, come on, cheer on your fellow contestant. But what I want to know is now, what did you love about the final? Did your favourite get into the top 10 or did they just miss out? Please let me know in the comments down below. Also, what was a shock for you? One of my biggest issues was Greece and Spain placing so low and San Marino placing so high for what it is. I also just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's been watching LucaVision and everything that I've had to bring you so far this Eurovision season. I will continue to make videos. Thanks for watching guys and thanks for all of your support. And don't forget to check out my album Closed Heart Dry Eyes on Spotify now. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Now Eurovision's over, I'm like, what is life? Who am I? Where am I? What am I? What am I going to do now that it's finished? Roll on the Netherlands 2020. Woo! Justice Morocco. Cause baby you're crazy If you really think I'm coming to save you Don't want you in my life